Uh, so, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for the introduction. Uh, I'm going to speak uh, very briefly about Qualcomm. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about digital pens in order to put the perspective for my talk. Uh, then a couple of words about system architecture, uh, signaling, uh, the receiver architecture, and the algorithms, and some unique examples for unique problems uh, that are associated with airborne ultrasound. A couple of words about Qualcomm. Uh, Qualcomm is a big company. It is already 27 years on the road and number one in wireless semiconductors, number one as a fabulous uh, company, and number one in CPU, GPU, DSP, DSP power performance. Uh, Qualcomm has a center in Israel, which was actually the first R&D center worldwide with 500 employees in three sites, here in Haifa, in Hoda Sharon, and in Bet Shemesh. Uh, Qualcomm Israel is active in ventures, uh, M&A, and ecosystem support, so uh, my innovators, friends, Qualcomm is a good place for you to uh, go to. Um, a couple of words about my company, Epos, which I founded in 2003. Uh, we shipped our first product in 2007, started cooperation with Qualcomm in 2009, which in 2012 uh, matured to an M&A. In uh, 2011, we uh, launched our flagship product called Wacom Inkling. Basically, the product is a, a two-part solution, a receiver and a pen, uh, and I will talk about it in a minute. A couple of words about this market, a digital pen. Um, so digital pens today become more uh, prevalent, and uh, this slide which I prepared about a month ago is already irrelevant because there were so many uh, launches of digital pens worldwide, uh, recently from Microsoft, from ASUS, and others. Uh, so what can you do with a digital pen with, uh, in a digital world? Uh, basically, the uh, main use cases are uh, drawing, writing, annotating, um, taking snapshots, note-taking during lectures, e-book editing, which, is, uh, which I'm sure is very relevant here in the Technion, uh, digital signatures, and being creative with uh, painting and drawing. Um, there are many market researchers that show that people, even today, like very much their pen and paper, and I would argue that most of you guys, if you brought a, a bag here, you probably have a pen and paper, and some of you that uh, develop algorithms, I don't think you are using Microsoft equations, probably you do your creative work on a piece of paper. So even today, a paper and pen are something which are very dominant in our lives, as it has been in several thousand of years. Uh, I will say a couple of words about um, uh, the architecture of the solution before jumping into the details. So uh, basically, the solution is um, two parts. There is a pen side, which I'm not going to talk much about. Uh, the pen transmits ultrasonic encoded signals, which are picked up by a receiver. Receiver is actually microphones embedded in the handset, the same microphones that are used for voice call. Uh, these mi mic signals are uh, uh, digitized with a codec and sent to an application processor. Uh, and with the solution that we provide, the, the application processor actually provides the data uh, based on these di digitized. So you can see that on the receiver side, on the handset side, the extra uh, burden on the bill of material or cost is really minimal, and everything is here on the pen side. Um, uh, the, the, the way that we do the positioning is by using time of arrival or differential time of arrival of um, uh, the ultrasonic signals. Uh, we are using uh, carrier and baseband information. I'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, the transmission and continuous, and we are actually providing a multi-axis system on ultrasound. So, I'm going to show you a short movie, which I think will explain more than many words.
So inside this pen tip, there are actually transmitters that encode ultrasound into orthogonal series which are picked up by the microphones on the tablet, which are around the tablet here. There is nothing on the screen. So up till now it was pretty standard, much like other vendors provide the input on screens. But now when you, when you flip the ink cartridge, you can actually work on any device or any paper, any notebook around the device. Everything is active, everything is input. And since ultrasound is actually a 3D positioning technology, there's nothing that bounds uh, the technology to 2D dimension, and 3D uh, can be measured easily. Uh, we think that this is a very new and um, good way for, for us to interact with our mobile devices. This is a sample of a game uh, using a 3D input. The user will define a 3D structure with a pen. And now we can uh, uh, run a train over this 3D structure and also control his point of view with the pen. So, um, Last slide of marketing about Qualcomm solution. Uh, here I'm showing the unique, uh, the unique features that uh, for the user experience that our solution provides, which is mainly off-screen input and 3D and some other uh, very interesting user experience capabilities. Let's talk a bit about the technology. So as I, as I was saying before, in the pen we have two transmitters which encode orthogonal series. These series are derived from a, a family of series called Gaussian series. Uh, which is a family of orthogonal signals. A uh, derivative of that is used in LTE. Um, and uh, the information that the pen transmits is uh, spread over 25 to 88 kilohertz with a pseudo-random manner. Uh, in order, uh, the pseudo-random number is mutually exclusive between the two transducers in order to allow the orthogonality. And different pens can have different M, M factors here in the equation, which makes them orthogonal to the signal of other pens and thus allowing a multi-access uh, technology. A couple of words about ultrasound, ultrasonic time of arrival estimation. So, of course, the basic uh, estimator is a, is a correlator, but we are using also additional information provided from the baseband and carrier information. Actually, the relationship between the baseband and carrier uh, is uh, very important in deriving many of the things that happen in the channel, like multipath, um, and that allows us also enhanced accuracy and multipath immunity. Um, so this equation actually shows uh, that the variance of the position, the time of arrival variance, is very much dependent, of course, on bandwidth, SNR, but very dependent also on the carrier frequency. So once you can have the bandwidth and carrier in the same order of magnitude, you can gain a lot of um, accuracy with the time of arrival measurement um, if you're not falling within the ambiguity problems uh, when carrier and, base and, and uh, bandwidth are in the same order of magnitude. Um, so this is actually the whole system on the receiver side. Most of the uh, solution is software, as I was saying before. And the reason I put this slide is in order to show you some of the blocks here, which are marked with red. Uh, the red dots are uh, blocks that we needed to develop uh, uniquely for specific problems with the airborne ultrasound. Uh, and um, we found out that uh, taking known um, techniques from the literature and implementing them directly for time of arrival of ultrasound does not work in many cases. 
Uh, so we needed to tune these algorithms and sometimes invent them in order to make the system work. Uh, I'm going to talk about several of these problems. Uh, each of these algorithms uh, requires more than a few minutes, but if, you're more, if you'll be more interested, of course, uh, I'll be here later. But some sneak peek into some of the problems we have. Um, so one of the, I would say, major problems with airborne ultrasound is multipath. And uh, multipath uh, manifests itself in many ways. Uh, first, uh, as you saw in the movie, there is little way for, um, for us to control the users holding the pen. It means that fingers, hands, elbows, a shirt, or whatever will be with, very close to the microphone, block the signal, sometimes partially, sometimes entirely. And um, it, it will be very difficult to resolve what is the line of sight signal versus the multipath signal. Uh, also, in many cases, the, uh, the multipath signal here is stronger than the line of sight signal. Um, and it also requires uh, uh, much algorithms. Uh, also, ISI is very prominent. Tens of milliseconds of energy staying over the air means that signals that you were sending milliseconds ago are still prominent in the air. Um, so, very difficult problem. We were working with the academy for several years, and I don't think we have a bulletproof solution yet. Uh, other problems is um, a unique problem for urban ultrasound is uh, speed of sound. Um, unlike uh, GPS, which uh, assumes more or less the same speed of light, speed of sound is very varying, um, and it actually multiplies the time of arrival in order to get the distance. Uh, speed of sound is very dependent on temperature, but not only on temperature, it also depends on atmospheric conditions, humidity, uh, fluctuation, turbulences, pressure. Uh, and even if we look at the tablet screen, a uh, speed of sound will vary between different areas of the tablet. So we, uh, even finding one position is not good enough. Just to give you an example, with one temperature difference, we get about 0.17 millimeters of error. It doesn't sound much, but once you multiply it with the geometry, uh, you can get up to 0.5 millimeters, which users will definitely see. Um, so uh, one way to uh, tackle this is um, to solve an MSE problem with an error function g theta, which is uh, defined here, uh, where we solve a set of equations based uh, based on the overdetermined system because we have more microphones than, than we need and more transducers than we need. And we solve and, pro and get all the data, uh, this, uh, the speed of sound, uh, the tilt x, y, z. And we also add to that uh, function, it seems simple, but we also add to this function some heuristic data, data de uh, based on SDFs, uh, history, uh, weighting, uh, which microphone is blocked, which is partially blocked, which information is more... Uh, um, more stable and which is not. And out of that, we derive the speed of sound, which then again fed back uh, with the loop back into the, um, into the equations to solve the next iteration. A couple of words about uh, synchronization and why it's important. Um, so as you saw before, we have microphones. Microphones mean that we are uh, using a differential time of arrival. A differential time of arrival means that, uh, th uh, that we are actually uh, looking for a solution for hyperbolas, and hyper hyperbolas tend to um, magnify uh, input errors, uh, output location versus measure data error, uh, tends to be magnified, which is not the case when you measure time of arrival. Then you uh, uh, look for a solution of circles. So it makes a lot of sense to try to solve and synchronize the system, uh, system timing uh, which will keep uh, drifting because the transmitter and receiver do not have the same clock and we don't have any hardware to synchronize between them. So there is a big incentive to synchronize between the two in order to get better accuracy. Uh, this is an example of one way of synchronizing, uh, which is based just on ultrasound signal recovery, uh, starting with the multilateration equations of the differential timing, recovering the emission time out of the differential, this would be very noisy, but then we uh, add additional time-based estimation uh, recovery based on the notion that uh, crystals uh, usually follow a, a linear model, which you can see here, um, and uh, this way to try and recover the time base. Uh, this solution can work on some areas of the uh, working area. Here I put a GDOP map, 
uh, of a handset. This is the rectangle here, microphones on the edges. And uh, the color code uh, is um, uh, symbolizing the GDOP, where low GDOP means there is less multiplication of the error, and red colors means uh, there is a lot of multiplication, up to 100. So basically it says that here on this edge, if I have an input problem of error of 0 0.1 millimeter, I will get a one, a, a one centimeter on the output, and that, of course, is not acceptable. Um, so this method is good for um, in the confined area within the screen. It can work there, but not outside the screen. And you, here you can see uh, this noise apparent on the estimated time base. Okay, um, another way of synchronization is using RF signals. Of course, that solves all the uh, interdependency that I was showing in the last slide. Uh, but there are other problems, um, magnetic noise um, and uh, coherent noise. Um, and since we're using basically the same signaling, we're getting the same benefit from the carrier and basement signals. Um, so the summary, digital pens becoming very prevalent today. We see a strong push from the market. Uh, we think that Qualcomm provides a good and unique user experience. Um, I hope you uh, were convinced that Airborne Ultrasun has unique and interesting problems in the area of signal processing. And for more details uh, or some cooperation, uh, you can get in touch with me or get my details from the, from the organizer. Thank you. <laughs>